Good morning, everybody. This is Grant from State of the Spark, and it has been far too long. We're here this morning, and this morning is a Monday morning at about 6, I don't even know, 6.32. To greet you this morning, I wanted to touch on a few things, and I wanted to get back into doing the Spark Show. That's starting our day off, right? We're going to be teaching on why entrepreneurs seem like they have so many irons in the fire, juggling so many plates, following the shiny objects. We're going to be talking about this and more in this morning's Spark Show. But before all of that, you know what time it is. Morning cup of gratitude. What are you grateful for this morning? What's got you pumped? What's got you excited? You got to share with each other, with one another, or at least articulate to yourself what you're absolutely most grateful for, and I'm gonna start. Let's start with a morning cup of gratitude. I'm grateful for several things this morning. Number one, I'm grateful for my partners on the Not Crypto Bro Show. Catch us on Tuesday afternoons at 3.30 p.m. or Saturday mornings at 6.30 a.m. We talk about all things crypto, and then the Saturday morning show is small business development and a little bit of what's going on in crypto, but really what we're building behind the scenes from a cryptocurrency and podcasting perspective, how to market your business. We, we cover all of that. And Tuesday afternoons, we reserve for what's going on in crypto and how cryptocurrency is affecting. Basically, we're helping you get financial freedom and we're focused on crypto because it's the most cutting edge thing. What are you grateful for? And just a quick request, if you like this show or if you, someone needs some positive encouragement, if someone in your world needs encouragement, if someone in your world needs a positive outlook, that's what we're doing here. So make sure to like, subscribe, or share. Share the show with a friend if we cover anything that's interesting to you. So thanks so much, and I'm grateful for you. Ryan Christ asked me a question yesterday, and I didn't respond to him because I was dealing with wasp stings, and I was focused on that. Ryan asked me about XRP and Ripple. Not financial advice, but I'm speaking directly to Ryan. Good morning, Ryan, who I know is out there hustling extra hard on his business. He worked some long weeks cleaning boats, but he asked me about Ripple, XRP, a cryptocurrency. Ryan, not financial advice. You saw that I own about 4% of Ripple myself, and you asked, should you get on it? Food for thought for you to consider as you decide whether or not, and you can tell I'm being very careful about this advice, and I'll text you my direct advice to you later. <laughs> but Ripple is part of a network where they're going to be launching the, it's known as ISO 20022. Basically, it's almost like a text messaging standard that has been going on for a long time between the SWIFT banking system. So normal banking sends banking transactions all over the world and it has never included crypto. There are six cryptocurrencies that actually are facilitating the new standard coming out in November in the United States. It's been adopted in other countries. But coming out in November, the ISO 20022 standards has six cryptocurrencies, which include Ripple and XRP, as the programming language to allow cryptocurrencies to travel between international banks and banking systems. Ryan, to your question, should you buy XRP? You should definitely consider that it is going to be part of the major infrastructure of banking that allows for cryptocurrency. That doesn't mean they're gonna be trading XRP per se, they might be, but they're going to be using it to facilitate the transactions, which is super important. Meanwhile, Ripple has maintained contracts with Santander and American Express all throughout the SEC uh, lawsuit. You should know about the SEC lawsuit, which is still ongoing. But in every major juncture, the judge has ruled against the SEC to prove evidence that XRP is a security and not a technology. And they have continued to fail in that regard. Along with that, this whole ISO 20022, it could be super technical and super confusing. But here's the curious thing. If this is facilitating banking, the government has already said they will probably use the same architecture for the United States central bank currency. So yes, every major government is rolling out their own digital currency known as CBDC, Central Banking Digital Currencies. China already has the digital Chinese yuan. Over 70 countries in the world have already moved to their own version of their digital currency, getting rid of fiat currency entirely or paper currency as much as possible. Ripple is part of the architecture for the United States ISO 20022 protocol as well as the roadmap, possibly, maybe, speculation only, not financial advice for the United States central banking digital currency. You saw my own portfolio and I'm telling the public because I told you I own about 4% of my port portfolio is currently XRP. That is not financial advice. That is how I am speculating. Great question and good morning, Ryan, for kicking ass. And I always trust that this guy's a friend and a fan no matter where we're on the planet. I know he's out there hustling. I got a massive amount of respect for what Ryan does. Let's talk about the markets real quick. 
The Dow is about 30,034 right now. The S&P 500 is at 36.43. The NASDAQ is about 10,899. Now, this is Spark show number 268. Now, at 267, which was a little bit ago, I've been derailed in so many other things. And that was a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago, actually. Actually, it was a few months ago when I last did the Spark show. And on the Spark show, these numbers were actually about the same. So you might have seen the market go up. You might have seen the market go down. But in the last few months, the market is largely horizontal, believe it or not. Now, what are the DeFi markets up to? Bitcoin is at 19,360. Ethereum's at 1,821. Cardano ADA is at about zero, about 37 cents. And XRP is about 47 cents. To answer Ryan Crisp's question about XRP yesterday, I have purchased XRP as low as 10 cents, and I've purchased it as high as at about $3. It's gone up and gone down, and right now it's at 47 cents. For my case and in my portfolio and what I'm doing, do your own research, D-Y-O-R, do your own research. This is like as discounted as it gets for me, and I'm just stacking. Now, mind you, I'm not buying in a large chunk, Ryan, because if you are interested in buying, or when I buy, I very rarely just buy a big chunk. If I had a grand or 10 grand just for round numbers, I would take half that amount. This is how I dollar cost average, and dollar cost averaging is my approach of choice. I cut it in half, and I put that much in, and then I watch the market move, and on every week, every two weeks, every month, I then buy an additional chunk, and that's how I purchase it. There's my girl, Jessica. Your husband and I have been playing phone tag, Jessica, and I will commit to connecting with him this week. He seems like a great guy. And for those who don't know, Jessica husband, Miguel, has a YouTube channel, and I love the topics he's bringing up. These people live a sustainable life, as sustainable as possible, and they live an integrated life. So please do check out Miguel's YouTube channel. Let's talk about why entrepreneurs seem to be juggling so many things, seem to chase so many shiny objects. Let's talk about it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Jessica. Jessica got horned by a heifer on Friday and survived. She is officially a cowgirl. Cowgirl up. Keep on keeping on. I can't believe that. That that would probably terrify me more than the wasps terrified me for sure. To be horned by a cow. Cows are generally wonderful. And for those who don't know, I spent most of my summers as a kid on my grandparents' farm around plenty of cows. And you just walk out there. A lot of people are terrified of them. And bulls can get aggressive, but not that bad. You get out and mess with them, but to for a heifer to horn at you and get you, it's always frightening. So do let us know if you're in and if you need some encouragement or just a warm cup of morning gratitude that you are one with nature, sister. Why entrepreneurs seem to chase so many shiny objects. Now we have as many metaphors for this as it seems like entrepreneurs have irons in the fire, juggling plates, spinning too many plates, chasing shiny objects, ADAD, Irons in the fire. We could just keep finding ways to express that entrepreneurs seem like they're always chasing the latest thing. And it's very critical because we often attribute the lack of success in entrepreneurs or the failure rate of entrepreneurs to this very fact. In fact, a lot of statistics you've heard between 10 and 20% of all businesses fail in the first year. This morning's research revealed that the consensus seems to be that only 10% of businesses survive, 90% of businesses succeed. If you actually break the data down, it seems more like it's closer to 20% succeed, 80% fail. But over a long enough timeline, they all ultimately close, get acquired, or clo uh, or fail because the, because the entrepreneur doesn't want to continue in general or it's too difficult. In the end, there's a 100% failure rate of businesses if you actually want to get metaphysical. But practically, let's talk practically. Only 10 to 20% of all businesses succeed. Some of the numbers are this. 10% of all businesses fail in the first year. An additional whopping 70% fail in the second through fifth year. And over the next two years, another 10% fail. And the reason that the numbers vary between 10 and 20% success rate or 80 to 90% failure rate is that if a business lasts seven years, can we say that it failed? Can we say that they closed? Did they go bankrupt? Did they file chapter 13 or chapter 11? No, typically a specific thing happens. The main reason this is fail, whether in the first year or the second through fifth year or the sixth or seventh year, the key reason given, especially today, is now, can you guess? I'll give you three seconds to guess what the main reason is. And the main reason businesses close. When you say a business fails, generally, it's just that the business closes. Technically, they have revenue. It's not always chapter 11 or chapter 13. It's because the entrepreneur has decided it is too difficult and they quit, but that usually is led to the fact that a key person left. 
They were trying to hand over that business or delegate that business or they shared that business with their spouse and that person left the business. And usually this causes a rift in the relationship. They don't want to do things apart. One quits because they're just done with it and the other person is pulled into that. Or they have employees and a general manager and they're either not paying the general manager enough or they're relying too much on that general manager like they were relying on them spouse or like as hard as they work. They expect their employees to work as hard as themselves. Sidebar, never expect your employees to work as hard as you did. That would be a diamond in the rough. And you should actually pay that person an extra zero more than you ever got paid in the business to keep that person on. Grant, my business can't afford it. I know. But in principle, that's what it should be. The main reason businesses fail is a loss of a key person or a key person quits or they just don't carry water. That's a phrase we use in, hey, are you going to carry the water, man? Water is absolutely critical. And it's a phrase from the developing field of if you can't do the basics, if you can't carry water, Lord knows we can't build a village together. This phrase is used and passed amongst entrepreneurs, and actually not many people are familiar with carrying water in the entrepreneurial context. And here's the summary of today's lesson, the transparency into the life of an entrepreneur and the many irons in the fire. And where this came from was this. One of my partners from Not Crypto Bros, they're both really good friends, and we actually have never met in person. We all have different entrepreneurial backgrounds. We've all done some fundraising. We've all been invested in crypto and have made money and lost money in crypto. One of us teaches podcasting and helps people launch their content. Another one of us on boards and works for Mercy Corps. One of them said to me the other day, I proposed a new project. Someone from the Philippines came along, someone in my cryptocurrency network. They came along and they offered to start a business school. They would get the entire Filipino crowd and, Hin and Hindi crowd or Indian crowd to come together around the crypto projects as long as I would bring the business training and how to do business with people in the United States, how to raise money. I can do that. I've got people on my network and I would love to do that. And we're actually entertaining this. And I floated this idea to one of my not crypto bros. And I love the not crypto bros because we speak very transparently as entrepreneurs should. And he said very quickly, he said, oh, I can't do that. Man, I got used to being around entrepreneurs and they were always doing something new. I just got this one new role or position in my empire that I'm building. And if I took on another thing, it would just be so distracting. I appreciated that with them. And I joked, I said, are you putting me on notice, friend? And he said, no, 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 you do what you want. I just know that I've got to manage myself. And I very much appreciate that level of communication. And he asked, Grant, why do you always have so much going on? And I said to him this one key answer. The main reason businesses fail is that people don't carry water. He said, oh, that's true. I said, I don't chase shiny objects because I have AD. In fact, if anything, ADHD or ADD or what we call AD now could just be an entrepreneurial trait. It's a trait that actually looks for the breakthrough that has to occur. And when you need a breakthrough in your business or when you're not sure which avenues will really take, you can't be 100% sure. You can be confident in your will and confident in your skill. And you could say, I'm going to push through and make this one thing happen. As we do with Spark Sites, we're keep optimizing Spark Sites. But we do seem to have several irons in the fire. Why do we have several irons in the fire? Is Grant distracted? No, I'm 100% confident that 80% of our attempts will fail. I'm 100% confident that 80 to 90% of our attempts will fail because we will lose a key person. By that, I mean they won't necessarily quit. They just sometimes don't carry water. They say they're excited about X, Y, and Z, and they'll say they'll take on a role, but when you delegate it to them and entrust that to them, they fail time and again. It's one thing to train someone you delegate to. It's another thing to train time and again and they say they can handle it, but well, fire that person, get rid of that person. Absolutely. And cancel that avenue. Absolutely. That's my point. There are 80 to 90% failed attempts in entrepreneurship and 10% on a good year, 20% makes a career. If you could get 20% successes in your entrepreneurial journey, you can make a million dollar career, a multi-million dollar career. I say this to say, you probably need a little bit of empathy. For when an entrepreneur says, hey, I'm thinking about this new avenue, and instead of critiquing them, are you sure you need to take on another thing? Shut it. You're not in the mix. You're not in the fight. You haven't been here long term enough to know that people are going to drop the ball. They're just going to quit because they don't have long term time perspective, or they just want to go into other ventures. Maybe there's nothing wrong with them. Maybe they just realize this is, isn't for them, but they're still warming a seat. Maybe they care about you and want to just help, but they're critical the whole time. So they're not giving 100%. They think they are, but you can't complain and give 100%. It's proven. You have to be a believer to actually be able to give 100% in anything. So entrepreneurs run at a paradox. They juggle 10 things 
20 things, 100 things, knowing full well that 80 to 9 of them will fail, but still show up as if they won't because they know how to click into being a believer. That's a gift of entrepreneurship. We're believers. We believe in ourselves. We believe in the thing we're doing. Well, why did you quit that thing? Why did you let it go? Because it didn't work. But you were a believer. Yes, I was. That's the joy and paradox of being an entrepreneur. So I say this to develop empathy for the entrepreneurs in your world, and you can help them. If they bring up a new shiny object and you want to critique that, I encourage you to hold your tongue and instead ask this. Are you concerned that some of the other things we're working on aren't going to work? They'll have a decent reason. No, it's an easy tangent. For example, we've got a new niche in Spark Sites. Within Spark Sites, we have several irons in the fire. We call them big rocks for the quarter. There's several things we're attempting. We're going to launch an affiliate program this quarter so that you can share the love with Spark Sites and get paid 20% commission. That's one iron in fire. We're going to chase a niche, including influencers. We're going to chase another niche called coaches and trainers. Those are three irons in the fire. Grant, are you not confident that small business owners are going to cut it? Hey, I got to be honest. I'm a believer that I can sell websites to small business owners, but I am noticing the market is changing a bit. Small business owners are becoming ambiguous. They're becoming lackadaisical in their website. And as we have to raise our prices because we increase the service level we're bringing, we increase the skill we're bringing, we create links pages. All of our clients get links pages so that you can put it in your social media profiles. Irons in the fire. Yes, there are things that are not working in the website space. And most of these attempts will not work, but I'm gonna keep stepping up to the plate. So if the entrepreneur in your life that sometimes causes headaches for you says they're trying something new, don't bat it down before you give some honest discovery. Hey, what about this channel? And what about that channel? And if you can't speak to the other irons in the fire in detail, then simply encourage them. Well, I hope one of them is gonna absolutely take off for you. How can I support you? Draw your boundaries, but how can I support you? That's what's going on. So here's three ends. Number one, if you're an entrepreneur, <clears throat> nurture even more projects. Man, let me tell you something. It's not your haters that are gonna hang you up. It's the people in your life that love you and are trying to protect you that are gonna hang you up. I have had more critique, more resistance, more speed bumps in the form of lovers, friends, associates, mentors, kind people trying to protect me that actually caused me to slow down. Now, sometimes once in a blue moon, it's healthy to do a reset but the MO is generally an MO that doesn't have the same level of ambition or grit that I have. That's okay. Love on them, move on. So don't, because we have these people in our lives causing us to hold back, we're afraid of coming to them with a new shiny object. Hey, I was thinking about this one thing. Maybe this, we're scared to share. So we actually are muting our own mission proactively so that we don't piss the people in our life off. I'm going to say go opposite of that. Nurture more projects. N, the first N is nurture. Nurture more projects. Now, give energy to your main thing. And I'm not talking about like a 90 degree turn elsewhere. Try to hit multiple birds with once. Try to do a project. And as you weigh the next object, consider, hey, how can I double dip? How can this be tangential? How can this be very near parallel to what I'm doing, but not a derail? I don't suggest derailing. I suggest filtering the shiny objects and the new projects that you're nurturing, of filtering them by what's really close to what I'm already doing, what uses the same resources I'm already using, what uses the same messaging I'm already using, and how can I compound what I'm doing? So you notice a lot of the irons in my fire are within Spark Sites. We're gonna be launching a course. We want us pivot to be a course company. That's another iron in the fire. We're doing landing pages. That's another iron in the fire, but that's all within this single bucket, and we need to make some transitions. But I'm trying to do that nestled in this little nest so number one, nurture more projects unabashed. Number two, N, normalize identifying. And this is whether you're an entrepreneur or a partner of an entrepreneur, a spouse, or a business partner of an entrepreneur. Normalize identifying what you do or do not like about the projects. Like I gave the example of my friend who was absolutely willing to say, hey, that one idea, I love the idea. I can't be a part of it. No problem. Thank you for saying it right out of the gate. You know intuitively. And I have higher trust with this friend because they were able to express that. And I felt trusted that they felt comfortable to share that with me. Number one, nurture more projects. Number two, normalize communicating what you do and don't like. We meet as a team. Hey guys, are we still cool with not crypto bros? Hey guys, are we still cool moving forward? What do we need to change? What do we need to get rid of? Let's iterate, iterate, iterate quickly. Speed to market is absolutely critical. And if we're not gonna do this thing, I'd rather spend more time on my thing. I paused the Spark Show to fire up the Not Crypto Bro Show. And now that that's got its own cadence, I can turn my attention back to my own thing. Another iron in the fire, 
but it's important and it's integral to all the other things I'm doing, especially in the M for marketing category. And if you're not familiar with MSPBA, our framework, the Spark Freedom Framework for Business, jump on our Facebook group, the Goals and Gratitude Facebook group, or our Discord, which should be in the comments below, and we can talk more about MSPBA. Number three, number one is nurture, number two is normalize, number three is narrow. Remove immediately the projects that aren't working. This is the point of having irons in the fire. It's not to disseminate energy. That should be a temporary state. It should be a temporary state that you have 10 projects. It should be a temporary state, unless you have a bigger team. It should be a temporary state that you as the entrepreneur have so many irons in the fire because you're narrowing, number three, N, narrow the projects. As soon as something is, something is not showing momentum, as soon as it's showing that it's not resonating, get rid of it quickly. You've heard the old axiom, hire slow and fire fast, but we never do this. As entrepreneurs, we love people. Our goal is to give people employment, so we always avoid firing people. We don't want to do that but we should, and we should find the language, uh, the language to normalize communicating. So number two is normalize communicating clearly. Number three, narrow, radically narrow the projects as soon as it's showing, hey, there's no flow here, there's no resistance here, and it's not core to my mission. It's an iron in the fire, it's an avenue I tried, eh, it's out. Why? Because you do need to conserve energy. And nurture more projects. Two, normalize radically clear communication with kindness. Hey, this isn't going to work for me. I'm not going to do it. Hey, I got to move on to something else. Hey, I love what you're doing. It's not for me. You don't have to hate something or kick something to leave it. And if you're the entrepreneur who's staying on, allow people to say, hey, I can't do this anymore and love them to the door. Show them to the door in a loving way. Hey, I really appreciate you sharing that with me. I really appreciate it. What are your boundaries on this from here forward? Come up with that language. What are the boundaries you have on this from here forward? Number one, nurture more projects. Number two, normalize. Number three, narrow. Get rid of the projects you don't want. Does that framework help? The three ends, nurture, normalize, and narrow the projects. The goal of an entrepreneur is not to forever juggle 100 things. The goal of an entrepreneur is to juggle things until something radically breaks away and deserves their energy. And it's normally around whether or not people carry water and gravitate towards that thing. People in the form of clients, people in the form of employees and partners or business partners. I just got off the phone with a gal, Crescenda, on Friday, Thursday or Friday. We took a call from LinkedIn and we hung out and we have amazing rapport for the crypto Web3 business school that we want to launch in the Philippines and in India. It's been a dream of mine to have a business school internationally using free resources to prosper. It's on my dream board. I offered to pay her, hey, what will it cost? And she said, no, 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 I'd rather partner. Okay, let's talk about that partnership. What people can I bring to the table? Does that make sense? Well, hopefully, hopefully you've been able to develop a little bit of empathy. Why are we talking about any of this stuff? Why are we talking about gratitude? Why are we talking about other news? Why are we talking about leveling up as entrepreneurs? Listen, there's an epidemic out there and that epidemic is not the pandemic. The epidemic is a mental health issue. People are struggling with hope. They're struggling to know what to do next. Entrepreneurs who are usually the bastion of optimism in the world, or at least hopefulness for themselves, they themselves are getting heavy. State of the Spark in the Spark Show is about igniting lives of explosive significance and imbuing you with the hopefulness of your potentiality. Forget the news. It's not your reference point. Your internal life and the strength of your internal life are the reference point for whether or not you will succeed. And until the day I die, I will find a means to communicate this to you and give you practical lessons. That's what we're doing here at the Spark Show. So I hope to fire this thing up with some of my awesome partners and bring awesome resources to you. For now, it's a 3N framework for nurturing more projects, normalizing, communicating radically clearly, and narrow, narrow down those projects as soon as you can in order to make a deeper impact in the world more quickly because the world needs more hope and confidence and opportunities, and you and I are here to do that. But listen, we're talking about freedom, we're talking about taking things to the next level, we're talking about frameworks that help, but no matter what you do, remember the mission, igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own. Have a great day.